Well, if you've got a sense of everything being just so, and everything in its place, I'd read the title to the video because it's the Z490 Tai Chi. Azrock has been really nose to the grindstone, working hard, and it shows in the Z490 Tai Chi. Let's take a look. So you know me, not content to just do a motherboard review. We've actually got to do a test and a build and put it through its paces and do some overclocking and really insane things. First thing you notice about this motherboard taking it out of the box is two VRM fans, dual eight pin connections for CPU power. And when you look closer, you see a third VRM fan. Yeah, this motherboard does not mess around when it comes to VRM. That's because the Comet has landed and we've gone to infinity and beyond with the number of pluses after the uh, 14 nanometer. So 14 nanometer plus, 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 plus. And the infinity and beyond part is Comet Lake doesn't support PCI Express 4. And yet this motherboard advertises compatibility with PCI Express 4. Something is coming down the pike with PCI Express 4. But this motherboard was tested by us with the 10900K and the 10600K. Now, ASRock has done some really interesting things with this motherboard, and the Tai Chi is becoming really kind of a high-end board, at least for Comet Lake. You know, it was true when I think the Tai Chi name sort of first appeared, that it was everything you need and nothing you don't. <laughs> well, with Comet Lake, apparently you need three fans on a VRM. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, see, I don't know. It's a joke there. Let's take a look at the physical layout of the board. First up, you notice you got three physical by 16 slots. This really isn't a lot different than Z370, Z390, Z270, Z170. Not a lot has really changed on the chipset side of the equation. To be sure though, this motherboard is a new socket, socket LGA1200. This is a new socket de designed to deliver a lot of power. From my conversations with ASRock and other people, it's like, do we really need another socket? The answer was yes. One piece extra is four for stuff that's coming and not quite here yet. Okay, well, why couldn't the socket wait until the new thing was here? Well, it turns out Comet Lake will drink the power if you're gonna run it. Now, our 10900K is particularly cherry. We can hit 5.4 gigahertz as long as we can keep it cool, which we do with an EK custom loop, which is completely insane for a $488 tray price processor. And it also uh, works really well if you have a VRM situation that can keep up with it. I'm happy to report the Tai Chi VRM has no problems dumping 325 watts, 350 watts, beyond 350 watts into the CPU. Although when I say 325 watts, 350 watts, you have to keep in mind that my 300-ish to 350 watts-ish is maybe not the same as everybody else. I'm looking at a kilowatt connected to the wall. So we're talking about power supply, RAM, motherboard, storage, no video card because we're using onboard video. And so that might be a little higher than most other people report. In a normal situation, a 10900K isn't gonna use anywhere near that much power. It's only when you're like super overclocked and doing really insane, terrible things and you need, you know, the cooling capacity of a 360 millimeter radiator custom loop. Yeah, anyway, three physical by 16 slots. Two of those run directly to the CPU and a by eight by eight configuration. The other one is connected to the chipset. There's also three M.2s. Now one of those M.2s is reserved for future use I suspect, but I don't know, the future CPUs will have more PCI Express lanes, four more PCI Express lanes, so that'll be a little bit more like the competing platform. And then the other three M.2s go through the chipset. So you can have one by 16 connection for your GPU, PCI Express 3.0, for any currently available Comet Lake CPU, or two uh, by eight by eight connections for peripherals, a GPU, and a peripheral, ever how you wanna break that down. We also have two PCI Express by one connections for other peripherals, things like sound cards, or video capture cards, but specs, specs is where it gets interesting. It says two by PCI Express 4.0 by 16. Obviously that's not something Comet Lake is gonna support. And then it says comma, PCI Express 3.0 by 16. Just the one. Does that mean that the middle slot doesn't work with a Comet Lake CPU? So I set up ye old test bench to see what's going on with the PCI Express lanes and it works exactly like you'd expect. I really don't know what to make of the labeling where it says 2X PCI Express by 16. I mean, I don't think there's enough pins in LGA 1200, especially given the power requirements, to be able to pull that off. So I think that it's two, 
Uh, I think it's basically the same setup. Just PCI Express 3 for right now, or PCI Express 4. Because you used the Black Magic Capture Card in that middle slot, and it worked just the way that I would expect. And I also saw that the uh, primary GPU in the system, which is a GTX 2080 Ti, dropped down to PCI Express by uh, 8 PCI Express 3.0 lanes. So I think that that PCI Express mystery is solved. Now in terms of Linux compatibility with this motherboard, it's basically the same Southbridge, same Realtek, so pretty much everything works. LM sensors basically works out of the box, at least with a relatively recent Linux kernel. Basically everything on the board works out of the box with Fedora 32, at least as far as the Intel gigabit NIC and sound and most of the USB ports. The two by two 20 gigabit per second port, maybe you might have to jump through some hoops, but the other USB ports and everything that you would expect and LM sensors is working as it should on the Tai Chi Z490. Which is nice, because you know, you get that six core 10600K, we can hit five gigahertz on all six cores, no problem. And at that point, you basically got an 8700K for 200, $250, well, $250 plus cooling. Or you can, you know, save a few bucks and get the 10400 non-K. The audio implementation on this motherboard is particularly high-end. It's an ESS Sabre 9218 DAC paired with a Realtek ALC 1220 uh, ALC codec. It's a Nehemic audio, basically the Nehemic audio implementation. It's got a pretty good signal to noise ratio out the back of the board. It's a pretty good implementation. It's a pretty clean implementation. Even the mic input is pretty clean in terms of signal to noise ratio. It also has dual LAN, although the dual LAN implementation surprised me a little bit. With the Z490 chipset, Intel is officially supporting two and a half gig. Yeah, Intel's got a two and a half gig chipset, which is you know nicely in between their super high-end server X550 10 gig chipset and their one gig chipset that they've had since the dawn of time. Well, this motherboard uses a single one gig Intel NIC along with a Realtek Dragon two and a half gig LAN. So if you do happen to get a two and a half gigabit switch, you can use it. Just know that it's not an Intel implementation of that two and a half gig network connection. At the rear IO, first up, I'm gonna point out combo PS2 mouse and keyboard port. Yes, I love my Model M. It sings me the song of its people. It's so good. This is a combo port, so it'll work with both PS2 mice and keyboards. It works really well. Soon my Model F will be here. We also have our Intel Wi-Fi 6 antenna connections. In the box, you've got a great high-end, movable, non-rubber duck wireless antenna. I love to see that. I, you know, it's a, it's a great thing when a motherboard vendor includes an antenna that you can move around. We've also got a CMOS reset button, which is handy. We've got both DisplayPort and HDMI out because, hey, these Intel CPUs generally have a video out, which is, you know, works pretty well. And you can use that for encoding, transcoding. Uh, some applications support that for acceleration. At the back of the motherboard, in terms of USB connectivity, we have a nice mix of both type A and type C ports in speeds of five gig, 10 gig, and 20 gig. Five that are five gig, two that are 10 gig underneath the NIC that's on the sound card side and the one that's 20 gig, which is the one under the other NIC. The motherboard has four onboard DDR4 DIMM slots that is uh, supporting a maximum of 128 gigabytes of memory up to 4666. Now, that is an overclock. I'm not aware of any memory currently on the market that that's fast, but I do have an OLLY kit, which is DDR4 3200, 128 gigs, and I'm happy to report that that kit compatible with this motherboard. Now you might be wondering, how did they implement the VRM? Well, it's a Dr. Moss 50 amp implementation with uh, 14 power phases. I don't really care if you have three power phases or 756 power phases. What I want to know is if I do terrible, terrible things with the processor, like load the processor in such a way that you can play music on the coils, that's the thing, then it's stable. And this motherboard was stable in the torture testing that I did with Prime 95 and Ada 64 and some custom software and compiling code and about anything else I could throw at it. And finally, the last feature that, you know, if you're looking to build a system for Comet Lake and you're thinking about the ASRock motherboard, the other reason that you might go with an ASRock motherboard is the BIOS. The BIOS really exposes a ton of options. Like there's probably too many options, but that's actually a good thing. Sometimes there are bugs, sometimes the option shows up in more than one place, sometimes you have to fiddle with things a little bit, and this is definitely a new platform and things changed a lot because as I was doing this video, I updated the BIOS a couple of times. But 
The BIOS really gives you a lot of options and flexibility with respect to tuning and setting your PCIe layout. You know, some board vendors like to hide all the options. <laughs> ASRock wants to give you all of the options. There's not necessarily time to test every little thing, but if you reach out to ASRock support, at least from my vicarious experience on the level one forums, they'll try to take care of you and help you with a particular issue. So I like the way that the ASRock BIOS is you know, some of the items don't necessarily have as much documentation as I would like explaining what the option is on the sidebar, but generally the ASRock BIOS is quite good. And with Comet Lake having so many tunables, we've got things like thermal velocity boost. There are a lot of options here that will really give you some flexibility in terms of overclocking and other features that you might use to take, you know, as much to squeeze as much out of your processor as you possibly can. In other words, the Tai Chi did a pretty good job taking care of me in terms of not letting me do anything really terrible and it didn't murder my processors, so there's always that. I'm Wendell, this is level one. ASRock's done a nice job with the Tai Chi Z490. I like it. I'm signing out, and I'll see you later.